Good morning everyone. Um, it is Friday morning the 26th of March and welcome as we join this morning for our reading for Lent which is going to be John chapter 15. Uh, so let's read this chapter together. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit and he prunes the branches, branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. From apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask of anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to the Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves. Because the master does not confide in his slaves. You are now my friends since I have told you everything the father told me. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. For this is my command, love each other. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it. But you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. Do you remember what I told you? A slave is no greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally they will persecute you. And if, you, and if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. They will do all this to you because of me. For they have rejected the one who sent me. They would not be guilty if I had not come and spoken to them, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Anyone who hates me also hates my father. If I hadn't done such miraculous signs among them that no one else could do, they would not be guilty. But as it is, they have seen everything I did, yet they still hate me and my father. This fulfills what is written in the scriptures, they hated me without cause. But I will send the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to me, to you, from the Father, and will testify all about me. And you must also testify about me, because you have been with me from the beginning of my ministry. Amen. That's the end of John chapter 15. Again, it's another chapter which is so well known. Um, and it's packed full of things. And it talks about Jesus saying about he's the true grapevine. That's something which we will unpack in our Bible studies. Um, as we look at John 13, 14 and 15 between now and the summer. So if you'd like to see a little bit more or learn a bit more about that. Then join us on a Wednesday night for that. But as you read through that. Jesus talks about us belonging to him. And be about being part of him. And that's what it means being a child of God. That we belong to him. We are part of his family. Uh, and to remain in him. Just to keep on walking with him day by day. But there's a cost for doing that. The cost is laid out from verse 18 onwards. About how the world will hate us. The world will hate us because the world has hated Jesus. And why the world has hated Jesus is at the end of chapter 14 when it talks about um, the one who rules the world is coming 
because the ruler of this world approaches, he has no power over me. That's in John 14, verse 30. Because Satan rules this world, because this world is full of evil and hatred and sin, then Jesus coming and showing the people that they were wrong, showing them God's love, meant that they hated him. And it means that whenever we follow him, they will hate us as well. But we're still called to love them. We're still called to show them God's love. To show them how God can transform them and change them. To be something far better. To be what God created them to be. People who would follow him and worship him. People who would care about one another. People who would love and not hate. What an amazing world we would have if people loved one another rather than hated. What an amazing world we would have that rather than nations fight against one another uh, and threaten one another, that instead we helped one another. Wouldn't that be incredible? Wouldn't that completely change our world? It's the sort of world God wants and God wanted. We're the ones who have corrupted it. Let's pray that God's love spreads around this world. That people see God for who he is. The loving Heavenly Father. And that they turn to him. Let's pray together this morning. Lord God, thank you again for your words and for the amazing challenge that it brings to us. The amazing transformation it can cause in our lives. Lord, how your word just changes this world that we live in. If only people would accept you and accept what your word says. Lord, we pray that this Easter time, in a world which is very different at this time because of COVID and everything that's going on, that again, people would pause and think and consider that they would look for meaning beyond this world. They would look for you. And Father, as they do that, that they would find you. And that their lives would be transformed for you. Changed in a far better way. Changed so that they can share your love with others. Lord, as we go into this weekend, go with us, we pray. Keep us safe. And as we gather on Sunday to worship you, we ask that you be with us. That as we gather from our homes or from wherever we are at the time, whenever we're watching, that we would truly know your presence, your peace and your blessing. So, Father, we thank you now and always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. It's been great to have you uh, watching along. Uh, no stream tomorrow morning, um, Saturday, taking Saturday off. Then we're back again on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Just remember that the clocks go forward this weekend. So you've got an hour less in bed, I'm afraid. Uh, but probably something that we could all do without anyway. Um, but please, if you can, join us on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And then remember that the following Sunday, we will be back in church. So if you're feeling confident enough to come along and join us, please do so. Remember to contact Barbara in the office or myself before one o'clock on Thursday, if possible, um, just so we can organise a seating. And remember that as you come along, it will be two metres social distancing, face masks the whole time, straight in, straight out, no hanging around. Um, to keep everybody safe but that's from Easter Sunday um, but there is more details on Facebook and on our website as well there'll be another announcement about it on Sunday morning um, but just join us this Sunday on as usual on live stream or on YouTube as well at 11 o'clock until then take care and God bless bye for now